Hey, welcome. Have you ever wondered how your phone just knows there's a cat in your picture or how Netflix seems to read your mind with its recommendations? Well, today we're going to pull back the curtain on the AI algorithms that make all of that possible. We're going to break it down, make it intuitive so you really get a feel for how these things, well, how they think. Let's jump in. So let's start right there with a question you've probably asked yourself. You snap a photo and boom, your phone automatically sorts it into an album labeled cats or beach trips. How on earth does it do that? Is it some kind of digital magic? Turns out it's not magic. It's actually something way cooler, machine learning. This is the real engine behind almost all the AI that we bump into every single day. So what is machine learning really? Okay, think about it like this. The old way of programming was to write a ton of rules, like if it has pointy ears and whiskers and a long tail, then it's a cat. But with machine learning, we just show the algorithm thousands and thousands of cat pictures and let it figure out the patterns for itself. It learns to do the job without us spelling out every little step. Now to really wrap your head around this, you need to know that machine learning is kind of split into two main camps. Two different ways a machine can learn. I like to call them the two worlds of learning. And here's the difference in a nutshell. Supervised learning is like teaching a kid with flashcards. You show them a picture of a cat and you say, cat, you're giving them the answer key. But unsupervised learning, that's like giving the same kid a big pile of Legos and just walking away. They'll start sorting them on their own, maybe by color, maybe by shape. They discover the patterns without anyone telling them what's what. Okay, so let's dive into that first world, supervised learning. This is where our algorithm gets a helping hand from a teacher. Now, inside this world, you're usually trying to do one of two things. First, there's regression. That's all about predicting a number, like what's the price of this house going to be? Then there's classification. That's about putting something into a bucket. Is this email spam or not spam? One guesses a number, the other picks a label. All right, let's meet the grandparent of all machine learning algorithms, linear regression. It's one of the simplest ideas, but don't let that fool you. It's still incredibly powerful. It just tries to find a simple, straight-line relationship between things. And this is a perfect way to think about it. The algorithm looks at a bunch of data on people's height and shoe size, and it finds a simple rule. It draws the best possible straight line through all those data points so it can make a prediction. Simple, right? But you can make it way more powerful by adding more variables, like age or where someone lives. Okay. Next up is the decision tree. This one's basically like a game of 20 questions. The algorithm figures out the best series of yes or no questions to ask to slice up the data. It's like a flowchart. Does the patient smoke? Yes. Okay. Are they over 50? Yes. Do they have high cholesterol? No. And it follows that path all the way down to a final prediction. But here's the thing. A single tree can be a little weak. The real magic happens when you combine a bunch of them. A random forest is like pulling a room full of experts, a bunch of different trees, and just going with the majority vote. And boosted trees? They're even smarter. They build trees one after another, where each new tree's main job is to fix the mistakes the last one made. It's like teamwork for algorithms. All right, it's time to talk about the real powerhouse of modern AI. The thing behind everything from recognizing your face to chatbots. Neural networks. So, what's the secret sauce here? What makes neural networks so special? Well, with older algorithms, a person had to create the important variables, what we call features. But neural networks, they do that all by themselves. They figure out which combinations of the raw data are actually important. This is a total game changer. You see, a neural network is made of layers. You feed it the raw data, like all the pixels in a picture, at the input layer. Then it goes through these hidden layers. This is where the magic happens. The first layer might just learn to spot simple edges. The next layer combines those edges to find shapes. The next one combines shapes to find things like an eye or a nose. Until finally, the output layer puts it all together and says, yep, that's a cat. And you've probably heard the buzzword deep learning, right? Well, don't be intimidated by it. It just means we're using a neural network that has a lot of those hidden layers. The deeper the network, the more complex and abstract the patterns it can learn. That's how we get from seeing pixels to understanding an entire sentence. Okay, let's leave the world of teachers and flashcards behind. Time to jump into world number two, unsupervised learning. What happens when an algorithm gets no help 
no labels, and has to figure out the data all on its own. Now, it's really, really important not to get this mixed up with classification. Remember, classification is when you're sorting things into groups you already know, like cat or dog. Clustering is totally different. You give it a big, messy pile of data, and its job is to discover what groups are even in there in the first place. And the most famous algorithm for this is called k-means. And the k, well, it's just the number of clusters you're hoping to find. Are you looking for three different types of customers, five different themes in the news? You just pick K, and the algorithm does the rest. So how does it do it? Imagine you have a map of all your customers, and you want to open three new stores. First, you just drop three pins randomly on the map. Then, for every customer, you figure out which pin is closest to them. Next, you move each pin to the middle of the customers assigned to it, and you just keep repeating that process. Assign customers, move the pin. Assign customers, move the pin. Until the pins stop moving. That's it. That's exactly how k-means finds groups in data. So we've covered a lot. Regression, trees, neural nets, clustering. It can feel like a bit much. But the best way to think about all of this is not as a long, confusing list, but as a toolbox. And the whole point is to know which tool to pull out for which job. Different problems need different tools, right? If you've got a simple problem or things seem to have a straightforward relationship, linear regression is awesome. If you have more complex data in a spreadsheet and you just need a solid, reliable workhorse, a random forest is a fantastic choice. But if you're dealing with images or sound or human language, nothing out there can touch the power of a deep neural network. So let's wrap this up with a quick recap. Machine learning is all about letting algorithms learn directly from data instead of being programmed for every task. Sometimes they learn with a teacher, that's supervised learning, and sometimes they have to figure it out on their own, that's unsupervised learning. And right at the cutting edge, you have neural networks, which are kind of like building an AI brain that learns to see the important stuff all by itself. And that brings us to the end. We've gone from drawing simple lines to building complex artificial brains. Now that we have a better handle on how we can teach machines to learn, it leaves us with a really big question, doesn't it? What's the most important problem we should ask them to solve next? Thanks so much for tuning in.